Welcome to Nick and Becca's Fireside Chats, brought to you by TriCress. TriCress is the home of the Kickass Coach Coach and Consultant Program. Everything every business coach and consultant needs to make them successful. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sister and brother team who founded TriCress and find out what really makes them tick, what irritates them, and what makes them laugh. Welcome back to Nick and Becca's Fireside Chats. I was meant to go and change my top so that we could pretend we'd done this over a series of weeks. Okay, well, why don't we, hang on, pretend that we have done this over a series of weeks and this is like two weeks later and you just happen to have worn the same top because right. you really like it. All right. And okay. it actually matches my car. Oh, right. Okay. All right, then. Let's okay. just pretend they well, won't know. No, no, they won't know. There isn't a fireside either. They don't know. No, that. that's true. <laughs> So, <laughs> it's really a neon sign chat. It is. Rather than a fire sign chat. Is. Isn't and it, it does end up the right way around the neon it sign. Does. So we're sorry that you can see the bit of a wire. Anyway, come on. I, anyway. don't, I don't know the topic. My sister just tells me what these topics yeah. are. And I quite like the spontaneity of it. I and like we've it. had to sit closer as well because I was a bit on the edge. On she the was. You were, you were coming across I was like a, that. I, do you know what I was? It was my favourite scene from the Muppets. Near and far, oh. wasn't that Sesame Street rather? Than oh Muppets? yeah, yeah, I thought so because I'm not. I was never keen on the Muppets. I love the Muppets. I know. I do see myself as a bit of a weirdo that I wasn't oh, keen on I the, love Muppets. the Muppets. I love the Muppets Christmas Carol. Hilarious. With Michael Caine. I yes. thought that was the, otherwise the Muppet Show, which was huge when we yeah. grew up. Just this. No, it didn't do it for I me at all. I loved it. I no. loved Animal. No, it just didn't do it for me. So if you were a Muppet, which oh, one would you be? <laughs> I'd be one of those miserable old men in the yeah, box in the theatre. <laughs> I identified with that, which is basically, what are we doing here? It's a load of puppets. I'm not good with puppet-based and Is anybody, does anybody like puppet-based entertainment? I mean, puppets. <laughs> Didn't we make those at primary school in the seventies? Oh, we're going to make puppets, didn't you? Didn't you? And you sewed two bits of yeah, felt together, did. didn't you? Puppets, <laughs> Jesus, that is the last. You liked Rod Hull and Emu. Oh, oh now he's yeah. a puppet. Yeah, that's true. Emu was just hysterical. That was funny. Yeah, <laughs> that was. But Emu and Rod Hull. Do you know who really, really can't cope with that at all? Who? Sally. No. No, she doesn't like the. Sally's his wife. She doesn't like the um, the manicness of oh, it, that's and the also best bit. that he, Emu puts him in embarrassing situations. <laughs> she finds that too cringy. Oh, She's not good with cringy stuff. That's why she can't watch The Office. Oh. Because it's too awkward. Right. Okay. So for the American listener that we've got, uh, go on YouTube and look up Rod Hull, Hull, H-U-L-L, Hull, Rod Hull and Emu. Yeah. Uh, and, in, and if you put in Michael Parkinson, when he was on it, Michael Parkinson was the quintessential chat show host uh, in the 70s and early 80s. I mean, he really knew how to get the most out of guests. Just have a look at it, that'll explain. Yeah. Anyway, what's the subject for this? Oh, 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 so I drifted off there to all kinds of things, but we'll come back to them. Uh, shopping. Oh, now. You see? Oh, look yeah. at my face, it's light up. Little face. Like a spaniel <laughs> with a dead grouse. <laughs> uh, yes, shopping. shopping. Now, I've chosen oh, this. Oh, God. Because I detest shopping oh, with a passion, God. whereas my brother, you love it. Oh, I mean, just saying the word, saying the word is just I'm transported to just heavenliness. Yeah, I really, really like shopping, and that includes supermarket shopping. Oh, for God's I like sake. going into supermarkets. I do. Why? It, I tell you what it is, and it's taken me a long time to realise this. Oh. It's the variety and it's the colour. It's the visual. It's the oh. visual of shopping that okay. gets me. Okay. And when you go into the supermarket, it, it's a feast for the for, for the for, for your eyes. Right. That's what I like about it. Gosh. Definitely the different packaging and the different logos and the fruit and the veg and just it is it's the colours. 
It's the Goodness visual me. is what I like about shopping. So, yeah. That's bizarre. Yeah, but that's what it is. Right. Okay, so mm. what about clothes shopping do you like? Is that the colours as well? And the styles, right. the colours and the styles. Mm. I'm a very visual, you should, I'm a very visual person. Yeah. What things yeah. look like is very, very important mm. to me. Mm. Um, and also I spent six years in retail you with did. Russell and Bromley. So yeah, again, Russell and Bromley, very high-end shoe and handbag retailers for men's and women's shoes and kids' shoes, actually. I sold kids' shoes. And I just, yeah, just loved it. And the business of retail, mm, is a, mm-hmm. I find it a fascinating thing Yeah, of just the business of being a retailer. Yeah. Yeah, I love shopping. It, it is, but overall, it's the visual. Gosh. Mm. So I only shop when I absolutely need something. And I'm one of those people that I go in, if I see it, I buy it. If I don't see it, I give up because I've had enough. And in fact, actually, earlier today when I arrived at my sister's house, Mm. you had two items of clothing that had been delivered to you. Yes. I don't order clothing online. Right. Ever. I go and see it because it's the part of the the experience is going and seeing what there is whereas you I absolutely get it's like no just send it to me just send it to me click send it i'll try it on if it fits great if i hate it i'll send, you send it, it back. back yeah no i like there's some shops cuz i live in a very nice part of edinburgh and there's some shops in brunsfield and morningside and they're only little and they have smaller ranges and i know that probably 80% of things in there are things that i really 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 like so I tend to go to one shop. It's called O Ruby Shoes. I'll give them a Ooh, shout out. Right. Um, I love nearly all their shoes and nearly all their clothes. So I absolutely know when I go in, I will find something that I like. I'll try it on, buy it, leave. It takes me 20 minutes tops. That thing there, and this is a, a kind of logistical thing where you just mentioned O Ruby Shoes. Mm. Can you put a, a link into this? Oh, yes, yes. I think you should. Yeah, I should. Genuinely, yeah. I promote a local retail. Yeah. I think that's a great thing I to will do. do because they've been going, I think they've been going for 10 years now, maybe even longer. And they they started off just with shoes and introduced a few clothing items, found that those sold like hotcakes. Um, and now it's mainly clothes with probably about 40% shoes. But the shoes, one of the shoe designers they have is ex Russell and Bromley. Oh, really? Yes, super comfy and stylish. I'm assuming that one of the things that attracted you to shop in the first place is because the shoe, your daughter, one of your daughters, is called Ruby. So there's yes. a natural kind of yes, yeah, yeah. There is an affection, there, and isn't also there? they have gorgeousness in the window. Visual, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bear with me while I ask my sister this question: Do you like shopping for cheese? Yes. Ah, yeah, I knew she would like the show. I like shopping because I like shopping. So I like shopping for cheese as well. I asked that because Edinburgh is, has got a very, very well-known, superb yeah. cheese shop. Melis's. Melis's. We might put a link to that as well. Yeah, it, it, it's just... Yeah. I've lived in Edinburgh for 22 years, but I now live in Cheshire, which is in the northwest of England, and so we're not near a Melis's. There is a lovely cheese shop, actually. In Chester. Is that? Yeah, really nice. Mm. We're starting to go to Chester a lot now. It's oh, really nice. nice. Chester is lovely. It is. It's lovely. Mm. But that has got a cheese shop, but there's something just great about Melis, isn't yeah, it? So you nice. like that. I like me- So what I like, and I don't mind going to Waitrose in Morningside because it's little. I like little So you mentioned shops. the thing about the ruby shoes thing is you it's said little. That it's little. Yes. So it, I hate... Now this, you know, the way we had a revelation about the dehydrated apple flakes and the yes, cave yes, in the last yes, podcast. Yes. This is a re- when I was a student and I used to go to the giant Tesco on the outskirts of York. It was oh, yeah, it was brand it. new. Yeah, 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 on yeah. the ring road, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um so I was in York for three years, went to uni there, stayed on another two years when I got a job there. I used to go to that giant Tesco mm-hmm. and have panic attacks. Why? Yeah. I didn't know this. Yeah. One doesn't want to hear that of one sister. Why did you have panic attacks? I don't. Attacks? Well, I think it's because looking back, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Looking back, I had a very 
difficult time with mother during my teenage years True. had a little bit of a breakdown at university I mean, we talked a bit about the 70s last time, but the late 80s weren't that good. So I had... For you. Yeah, I had... Um, I think if it, if it happened now, people would have said that I had a breakdown. Oh, okay. um, but the nurse at university said I had nervous exhaustion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Same thing, but a different name. Yeah, definitely. So I used to go to Tesco and have panic attacks because it was so big. That's, so actually, yeah. I don't like big shopping so, so places. So let me ask you this, because yeah. I think your husband, my brother-in-law, David, mm. likes Costco. Yeah, he loves Costco. Okay, so I love Costco, but only in a weekday when it's quiet. We yeah. went yesterday. We hadn't planned to We're go. not putting a link to Costco right. we, on. No. We're recording this on a Monday. My wife and I went to Costco yesterday on a Sunday and it was the last day of the month. It was a 30th junior today, which means everyone had got paid on the Friday. It was hellish. Yeah, that's it not was, good. It was, we got no. through it, but it was hellish. Yeah. I'm never going to go that, that timing anyway. No. But, so how do you feel about Costco? Because that's enormous. I mean, they're just basic, they're just huge warehouses. Yeah, I hate it. Yeah, so David, <laughs> David goes yeah, to that, doesn't he? He does. I leave him to get on with it. Yeah, him. so yeah. he likes that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I if I ever end up in Costco, I go and I get very specific things, and then I leave. I am mildly distracted by the diamond counter. Yes, they do have a diamond counter momentarily. Yes, while I look at all the yes. shiny things. Yes, Sally and I are. Yeah, but then it's like, well, no, I'm just here to get certain things, yes. and then we're leaving, and I'm definitely not buying a canoe. Um, no, I mean we go and we know exactly what yeah, it is. We don't yeah. buy, but I think David, I'm right oh saying, just God. picks up all. Oh, I've oh, got these, or oh, we've got this, God. or we've got these. No, we don't do that. Oh my God, it comes back. There's only three of us in the house now because our old children have left. It comes back with three hundred weight of tangerines, and I'm just like, we're never going to eat. eat those we're never going to eat all those tangerines. Wow. Wow. And he says, well, just in case. I'm like, just in, in case, case what? what? You know, the what? apocalypse hits. We're going to get, there's, <laughs> there's a chance we might get scurvy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so he does that. And there, there was that very famous time where Charlie, my middle child, was still living at home. And him and David went to Costco. And they went to buy some food for the barbecue. Yeah. And they came back with a massive off telly, basically. Did you actually just swear? Sorry. You? Oh, we've not set ground rules. I think we're allowed to swear. Well, that was the F. That was an F bomb <laughs> right there. And she'd said Jesus Christ as well. And some people will be watching this, particularly in America, are quite religious people. I don't think that demographic is going to tune in. <laughs> you don't know. I doubt it. Well, put it this way, they'll have switched off by now. Well, they will when yeah, you drop yeah, the Lord's yeah. name in. But there. it was a massive telly. It was huge. A big telly. And he only went out for burgers. Yeah, but that's that's an exciting thing to buy. It's just I can I just know that being a boy and having two sons, as you look at one of those tellers and go, them, that's mega, isn't it, son? Yeah. Imagine watching Star Wars on that or something. Oh God, that would mega dag and you go, stuff it. Should we just have it? <laughs> that is definitely a dad thing to do. And and it, and it's just it's one of the, my boys remember when we just bought we bought, it was actually very very similar I'd forgotten this I'd been talking about getting a decent telly this is a good few years ago a decent telly a decent telly and then we were out and I said oh stuffless let's just go and get one and the boys were like what really dad really really we're just gonna I went yeah stuff it come on let's just go and do it we've been talking about it for once let's just do it they were so excited so excited so that's a lot to be said so. What about a market stall? Some markets. Yeah. I like Borough Market in London. Yeah, That's very a food market. Bougie. I love the market in Old Trigham yeah, in South Mountain. What does bougie mean? It's like kind of Instagrammable, lovely. Oh, well, I don't do Instagram, so no, I No, but they are that. Instagrammable Yeah, I, I, I see that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and of course, when we were kids, we used to go to Berry Market. That was not. That was the opposite of bougie. Yeah, that was just real proper, proper market. Fruit and veg, jeans, 
Yeah. I mean, anything, hardware stuff, wasn't there? Black pudding. Black pudding, which is what Berry's famous for. Um, yeah, I don't mind a market. I like the, again, it, but it's the nice, you get the colour, but you also get the sound of the market. Yeah, you do. Because you yeah. get the, the, the people, you know, calling out their wares and two for a pound and three for half a knicker and all that kind of thing. What about, what about a hippie market? Clearly no. <laughs> Clearly. Harem pants. <laughs> I, I haven't heard the expression harem pants, but I think I know what you mean. You know the ones I mean. They're like... <laughs> harem pants. They're like a, a fouler version of culottes, aren't they? Yeah, I like a culotte. I don't. I've never liked oh, I culottes. Like and I like women's culotte. fashion. I genuinely... I, I, again, not only do I like shopping, but I like shopping with my, my wife. And and so it doesn't have to be for me. And she's looking for stuff, and we'll go and we'll go into different shops and go into different shops. And then I'll go right, okay. That sh- thing that you saw in shop one, that would go really well with that thing that you saw there. And that mm-hmm. go, I have an ability to do that as well. Oh, I think that was good. working in Russell Bromley, matching and things going. Yeah. That works well with that, and all you really need a belt with that to break that line up and things. I did a talk last week in London. Yes, I was wearing culottes. Me, really, that's I just. I think they're a very unflattering garment. Oh, I was super comfy and super relaxed. Oh, I can see though why they would yeah. be comfy. Yeah. I mean, if I wore fl- flared big trousers, I'd be comfy. Yeah, but yeah. I feel quite vulnerable. Would you? Yeah, there's too much air going on there. <laughs> so not a harem pant then. No, I don't think. Have you so. ever worn Hessian? Yes, because Have you? yeah, but no, because, oh no, because I would say in about 90, 1990, 91, the fashion, and some of you will remember this, the summer fashion was very, very rough textured kind of uh, basic shirts, waistcoats, and stuff. And I remember Next, yeah. Next did. Um, a selection of that kind of clothing and in fact they even did a, a kind of trainer thing that had a, a rubber toe piece but the, the bulk of the trainer was like a hessian oh, do you remember those. that hessian yeah, I do. stuff and the yeah. shirts were kind of very crude Ooh. coarse material it, it lasted one summer i think that. thank god for that yeah. i hate hessian yeah because it's uncomfortable yeah it's uncomfortable but yeah all the, any type of shopping i like I never thought you'd have worn Hessian ever. Well, it was fashionable. So it was the latest look. Right. And it was like, yeah, I like that look. If you haven't worked out by now, Nick and Becca, Rebecca and Nick, to use their posh Sunday names, are really passionate about building businesses, giving business coaches and consultants out there everything they need to succeed. Yeah, we have a laugh about it. It's not brain surgery. Join us, find out more at tricrest.com, T-R-I-C-R-E-S. Back to the podcast. No. My favourite shop, which obviously you were going to ask me. I wasn't. But you like shopping for jewellery, because you like jewellery, yeah, don't you? Yeah, bling. You like jewellery. I like a bit of bling. So, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah and I by do. their nature anyway, jewellers are small. They are small. And it, funnily enough, I don't like big jewellers. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I've just realised that like there's Langs in Edinburgh and it's too big. Yeah, that is big. It's Langs too is big, big, I don't yeah. like it. Yeah, it's, big. it's too much choice. Yes, I don't I like that. too much. I like things to be nice and compact so I can so look if you want easily. you very little choice in a very small shop, you need to go to Graff on Bond Street. <laughs> That's very expensive. <laughs> I'd have to sell two kidneys. You'd Never have to mind sell one you kidney. Owned. I mean, that's like the place, isn't it? Graph. Oh, oh it's just, my God, it's, it's beautiful. Just, it's just, it's just it incredible. Is. What's that arcade called in London? With all Burlington. The... Burlington. Oh, my God. You see, that's beautiful, isn't it? it that really... is beautiful. That shopping, little tiny, yeah. little individual shops where you yeah. can chat to people. I also yeah. like the chatty bit. Yeah, it's sociable. Yeah. And, and there's a limited amount of of just gorgeous things so I don't have to make any decisions. I think that's what I, I hate trying to decide between things and I much prefer to go, yeah, that one, no, hate that, yeah, like that. But one can get that with shops. So I 
have relatively recently realised that I really like Reese. Oh yeah, the stuff that, that yeah, Reese does. Good. Yeah, they're really good. So it's trend. In fact, this top is actually from Reese. In fact, mm. yes, it says on the back. I think doesn't oh, it? Oh yes, it Reece. does. Um, so they're quite trendy, quite fashionable. Yeah, they are. But not. And that, but still suitable for a, a chap in his late fifties. But they're not in your face like Bosch. No, that no, which I, is too no. much to me. Now I do have a pair of Bosch shorts, mm. but the, there's a tiny little mark on the side that, and it doesn't even say Bosch. And I think maybe in stitching right. in the same colour of, of the shorts, it says Bosch. But I'm not for a big logo-y no. thing. No, it's what it looks like. Yeah, so Reese not about really them. Yeah, Reese nice. is really nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite so, pricey. Yeah, it is, but it's yeah. good quality. So I tend to go in there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I won't shop around. Oh, and the other place I like is All Bar Brown, which is a very Ooh. unusual brand that most people haven't heard no, of. All of Bar Brown. Where's that? In London. They have one in London, just oh, around the corner from Savile Row. Right. Uh, on the same. I'm suspecting not cheap. Again. No, it's not cheap, but again, small shops, mm. small shops, and they tend to do summer clothing. So have t-shirts and shirts and swimming shorts and shorts, and they're just beautiful. No right. logo on, so again, it's right. one of these brands mm. that you rec you, you. If you know, you know, and if you don't know, you don't need to know. As somebody yeah. once said to me. About yeah. a different brand. Right. If you know, you know, and if you don't know, you don't need to what know. What brand was that? I can't remember. It was John, who was a steward for British Airways, right. and I was. We talk, must be talking about thirty years ago, and he used that expression. Gosh. And I thought I quite like that expression. Quite like that. Yeah. Yeah. If you know, you know, and yeah. if you don't, you don't need to know. That's a bit like our business. Yeah, I suppose. Yes, or yeah. what we'd like to get it to. Yeah. If you know, you know, and if you don't, don't. you don't need to know. Because it, it's it's there for people who want to train to be business coaches and consultants so that they can deliver this stuff to their clients. Not this stuff. Not this. Nobody's got this no. kind of No, Nobody banter. would pay for this anyway. No. Um, but the yeah. actual proper work that we do, yeah. and it is, it's only the people that need to know about us that will get to know about us because the vast majority of businesses don't need to know about the training no. that goes behind it. They just need to know about the outcomes and and the good stuff that happens when they interact with one of our coaches. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, fair enough. So if you could go anywhere in the world to shop, where would you go? Bond Street. Bond Street in London. Favourite yeah, street in the lovely. world for shopping. Yeah, it is. Start yeah. at the top, Oxford yeah. Street end. Yeah. And then I think Bond Street, which becomes old Bond Street. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's my fair. I mean, you've got oh, yeah. art galleries on there. You've got Sotheby's on there. Yeah. Russell and Bromley used to have three shops down no. there, and now they don't have one. No. They don't have a single one. Oh. The last one to go, which is really big, which is mm. on the corner of Bond Street and Conduit Street, is now Balenciaga. Oh, that's sad. I know. It, it, it is sad, really, but... You no, know, shoe retailing has changed. Yeah. Mm. Uh, they actually used to have an independent shop on there called F Pine. So F, the uh, the letter F, then dot Pine, which is spelled P I N E T. Right. And Russ and Bromley owned that. But unless you knew, you didn't know that that was a Russ oh. and Bromley. About that, you sold bespoke p things that were branded Pine. Oh, nice. Yeah, really, really high end, high end, high end stuff. So, yeah, Bond mm. Street, and I've been lucky enough to go to many, many cities. Mm. Have you been to Rome? Yes. Did you like the shopping in Rome? Yeah, beautiful. I, I bought it. the, I'm going to name drop here. I, I, I was, Sally took me to Rome for my 50th birthday. Did she? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes, yes. Neither of us had been. Right. So she wanted to take us to a place that neither of us had been. And we were looking forward to it. And I, I, this is not going to surprise you, I don't think, because I know you know Italy better than I. But it's exceeded oh, our expectations yeah. uh -huh. if, if you haven't been i talked to somebody last week actually who's about to go to rome for the first oh. time with his wife and i said richard you, you it's going to exceed your expectations yeah. it's absolutely incredible yeah. yeah so i treated myself it was a present to myself business was very very good that year 2017 to a bulgari 
Ooh. You know the the bangle that yeah, I yeah, wear, yeah. the black and gold. Yeah. yeah, that was a present to myself, Lovely. and I bought that from Bulgari in Rome. Nice. And then my oh. wife bought me the wedding ring to match. Oh, did she? Yes, which I've recently moved to this finger, actually, oh, probably lovely. enough. Yeah, so she bought me the matching wedding oh. ring. There's the matching wedding ring. So I've got the bangle that matches that from Bulgari. That's so nice. Yeah, yeah so Rome. Yeah, fantastic. If I like shopping in Rome because you can basically just do it on one street. Yes. And all the shops are little. It's the little again. And they're it? all yeah. gorgeous. And my favourite, I'm not really a handbag person at all, but if I were to be a handbag person, it would be La Furla. Okay, yeah, nice And they brand. have the most beautiful La Furla shop in Rome. It is gorgeous. They do know how to do leather. Oh, my God. It is to die for. The, the best shoes, really. I mean, some would say English, handmade English yeah. shoes, Barker's Churches, yeah. all these kind of things, Grenson's and stuff. For that kind of shoe, but if you want fine leathers and beautiful soft shoes that you don't have to break in and your feet bleed oh, to yeah. break them in, then the Italians have yeah. just nailed shoemaking. But don't you think, though, the Italians have kind of nailed everything? Yeah, uh, apart from stable pol political government. They've had a lot of governments yeah, since the yeah, war. I mean, like maybe 40 or 50 yeah, governments. Okay. But yeah, food, yeah. shoes, cars... Fashion, fashion, weather, weather, and they are beautiful art. people as well. Yeah, they're art. beautiful people. They are stunning. The best looking police officers in the world are in Rome. I'm not going to argue with that. Yeah, they really are. They really are. The tra the female traffic officers in Rome are just drop dead gorgeous. They're just fabulous. Um. So, yeah, if you want to go for art, food, culture, architecture, history. Sunny, warm weather. Sunny, warm weather. Fashion, shopping, lovely people. Great wine. Great wine. Rome, Italy. There's Italy's place. got it nailed, hasn't uh, it? Really? Yeah, it's that's a why pretty, I live there. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. That's why I'm learning Italian. She is learning Italian. Italian. Plus, Plus, we have Italian ancestry. This was a revelation recently, as my sister found out. It was. So my eldest daughter was looking through her family tree that had stuck in the back of her baby book. She was studying it, going way back. I'd never really looked at it. And way back in the 1700s, the Jewish side of our family, from Italy, Griffin. from Italy, oh, the Picciottos from Livorno. So 1742, what's his face, Picciotto, was then sent to Aleppo in Syria, ennobled by the Austrian emperor, whoever, to be an ambassador in Aleppo. We need to find out why. Yeah, I mean, we've gone off shopping a little bit, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we have, sorry. <laughs> so let's ask you what's the last thing that you bought. I think I know it was delivered today, wasn't it? Yeah, those two Rohan dresses, they were half price. Practical and yet stylish. Because they'll go in my suitcase. We're about to go to Thailand it's going to be hot and horrid and humid. And I've got two very lightweight dresses made of linen, won't crush, and that you can rinse and wash and they'll dry in four hours and they don't need ironing. My kind of shopping. The last thing I bought of any note was a drinks fridge. Oh, did you get one? Yeah, I was, I had, again, a bit like the large telly moment, really. I came to the fridge and it was an absolute mess with drinks and cans of Coke and beer and wine and everything. And it's like, this is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So I went and bought one of those, a, a decent sized drinks fridge, you know, with a, with a transparent yes. glass front door yeah, yeah, yeah. with the shelving. Um, and that's in the dining room now, and that has the wine in it Perfect. and the tonic water and the sodas, the cokes, and the beers in. Perfect. And that's just, I, makes me happy every time I see its little lit up face. <laughs> it's not got a face, but now I'm going to pause it because I'm going to get you to think of the question for our next podcast guest. 
Our next guest on the Entrepreneurial Journey podcast is Kay Sutha, who heads up Make Your Mark podcast agency. Now, Kay's huge in the United States. She's built a big business over there. And in fact, when I chatted to her a while ago, she's just about to move to Mexico just because she can, um, because her business is all remote and most of her clients are in the States. So it makes sense for me to move out of the UK and over to the US. So, Nick, what's your question for Kay Sutha? Kay, what impact do you think will artificial intelligence have on the shared human experience? And the background to that is this, is that as AI becomes more uh, prevalent, uh, films will be able to be tailored to an individual's preference. No. Really? Yes. So using lots of algorithms from all over the place, from Facebook and TikTok and all these kind of things, it will understand the kind of thing that you like and be able to do a film, produce a film or give a film an ending or beginning or whatever or characters that's bespoke to you. Mm. And if that happens, we no longer have the shared experience of going to the cinema or watching something and going, oh, did you watch Breaking Bad? Wasn't it absolutely fantastic? Because it'll all be different. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Well, I know how I feel about it. I think it's appalling. I'd like to get her opinion. I'll ask her. Right. Au revoir, so long, farewell and goodbye. Thank you for listening. Bye. We hope you enjoyed Nick and Becca's Fireside Chats just as much as we enjoyed recording it. Remember to like, subscribe, ring the bell, whatever it is you need to do. And head over now to tricrest.com, T-R-I-C-R-E-S.com. There's a ton of resources there for business coaches and consultants. Some are free, some you have to pay for. We really look forward to welcoming you to the TriCrest family.